We are all part of the human species. Separating us are just divisions of our own making, such as religious beliefs, borders drawn on maps, concepts of race, money, and gender. Debates about saving our planet from global warming are misplaced. Planet Earth doesn't need saving. It will recover long after we have wiped ourselves and all other life out. This is about the survival of the human species. So what if? What if we could focus more on this great threat to humanity and why we need to work together rather than focus on what spreads us apart? If we can make this shift, we could learn to relate as one great tribe of humans, learn to respect our common home, and ultimately save the future of all life on Earth, including our own. Having just turned 17, I'm no expert on the science of global warming, but I'm likely the only person on the planet of my generation to have had the privilege of first-hand experience in Earth's three main polar regions. Journeys that saw me cover a total of around 1,300 kilometres in over 80 days. I now feel a deep emotional connection with our planet Earth and a responsibility to play my part in the protection of these incredibly beautiful and fragile environments in the future. In May 2016... Sorry, slide. <laughs> I became... In May 2016, I became the youngest human to ski to the North Pole from anywhere outside the last degree. Historically, the sea ice around the pole is around two metres deep. However, due to warmer weather in the Arctic in 2016, it was just 1.4 metres deep. Each year, the Russians establish a temporary runway on the sea ice to fly adventurers in. The thin sea ice in 2016 meant that the first three runway construction attempts failed. The ocean currents caused it to crack before it could be used and our start was delayed by two weeks before we were able to fly in. On my way to the North Pole, we had to cross lots of open water, which is evidence of just how thin the sea ice was. We were also forced to navigate an unusually extensive amount of compression, which is where the sea which is where the thin sea ice has been forced together by the Arctic Ocean currents. Scientists are confident that within 30 years there will be no sea ice left there in summer and it will be possible to sail a boat all the way to the North Pole. The insights I gained to global warming on my expedition to become the youngest woman to complete the 550 kilometre crossing of the Greenland ice cap in May last year broke my heart. To start with, the edge of the ice cap had retreated so far from the coast that we had to physically carry each of our 80 kilogram sleds to the start of the ice. This consumed an entire day of our expedition. We encountered very warm conditions, resulting in extensive ice melts as we climbed up the west coast and progress was very slow in the slushy melting snow, making our sleds very heavy to drag. Then near the summit of the ice cap where conditions should have been extremely cold, we got caught in a blizzard for two days, but instead of howling snow, it was so warm we suffered pelting rain and were soaked wet. The Greenland ice is melting fast, and at some point, scientists believe the loss of the ice cap may be irreversible, raising global sea levels up to seven metres. My experience at the start of this year in becoming the youngest human to ski to the, from the coast of Antarctica to the South Pole unsupported and unassisted was very different. I encountered the worst weather on record for that time of year with several days in which temperatures dropped to minus 50 degrees with wind chill. We had a howling headwind for most of this 37 day expedition dragging sleds of around 100 kilograms over 600 kilometers to the pole. But looks can be deceiving. The experts I interviewed told me the ice around Antarctica is melting fast as warmer oceans eat away at the underside of the frozen continent. I call on the United Nations Climate Change Conference at the end of this year to put aside our differences and to think and act as one species facing an extinction event of our own making. For the first time in the history of our species, we have one common threat against which we must all act as one in order to survive. 
my generation will inherit this great threat of global warming and the political decisions of today's leaders. But it is up to current world leaders to make sure that we still have a fighting chance. I am confident that my generation will have the technology, the passion and the unified movement to making, make a meaningful difference, but it is up to the current generation of leaders to make sure we still have that chance. Please give us that fighting chance. Thank you.